going to take these things for granted. Matter of fact, I spent all day yesterday speaking to 60, uh, 6th and ninth graders at a camp talking about the zebra theory. All right. He just hit a bunch of stuff. You're very lucky. You're very lucky. You've got a great school, great situation, great coach. Who wants to invest in you and everything else. Success, let me start off with this. He just said, success leaves footprints. Success leaves footprints. Are you willing to follow, fit, and find those footprints? Okay? I guarantee you, I am a body language person. I'm all about, I don't care what you tell me. I have no, I don't care. I can care less what you tell me. Your actions are going to show me. Can anybody tell me what I was doing the whole time I was, I was up here? Anybody have any idea? Any idea I was sitting there? Some of y'all made eye contact with me. You should have figured it out. Anybody have any idea? I was watching to see how locked in you were on these words. I got some of you looking right at me. Some of you have on your cell phone. Some of you doing this. Some of you doing that. I was sitting there going, okay, how, how locked in are these players? How much do they want to win? How much do they want to lose? Because I think Buford, uh, he said, you need to be East for Sidon. You do not need to be Buford. You, you need to be great where you're at. I didn't come here to brag about Buford. Okay? But I can tell you, when I got to Buford, it was a bunch of rich, entitled white kids that thought that they owned the whole place and thought that they could do whatever they did. And I ran about half of them off. Because it ain't about you. It's about, guess what? It's about what? Come on now. Come on. Don't be scared. What's it about? It's about you. What's it about? Team. Team. Absolutely. And it's real easy to say that, real hard to do. Okay, I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to start off with what everybody talks about, the buzzword in athletics. The buzzword in athletics right now that everybody talks about is this key word, culture. You hear it all the time, don't you? Culture. Okay? What is culture? What do you think culture is? Very good. Excellent. What do you think culture is? Here's the deal now. It ain't about me. It's about us. Okay? I'm not here to scare you. I'm going to be truthful with you. I talk about the people with truth with you all the time. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to do nothing. You don't even know me. I don't know you. But guess what? If we're going to try to get better, you got to do it, guess what? With two-way communication. What do you think culture is? Kind of like everyone coming together. Like it. Like it. Culture. Don't be embarrassed. That's okay. Here's the deal. If you can't talk right now in front of me, and you can't talk among your peers, you're going to have a hard time getting out of there when he's asking you to do stuff on there. Talk to each other. Okay? You don't trust each other. If you're scared about what somebody thinks of you right now sitting in this room, you don't trust your teammates. If you're scared to say what you, what you really feel, then there's no trust. There's no relationship. Without relationship, there's no trust. Without trust, there's no success and belief. Okay? Culture to most people. Sweetie, would you mind? What's your name? Adam. Adam, would you mind standing up? See, I already, I already know. Be better. Man, be better. That, hey, looks good on t-shirt, don't it? Looks good, man. That's a good-looking t-shirt. Sure, in your locker room, you got all these saying slogans, all this kind of stuff, right? Because, see, most people think you're somebody. Most people think that culture is a slogan on a t-shirt. Or it's cute little quotes up on the wall. That ain't culture. Culture is basically what your beliefs are and then how do you put those beliefs to work and how do you make them come true. Now, to me, I see all this stuff. You know, we use family. You see so many people use family. So many people use family. I watch people play on the court and they look like the most dysfunctional family I've ever seen in there would be no way they would be a family. Arguing, basically chipping at each other, all these different things. Family, if you're gonna if you gonna say if you're gonna be about be better, be better, it's, you gotta live it. You can't say there's one word that goes with culture that's the hardest part of all. The hardest part of all with culture is accountability. There it is, right? Culture is nothing. Unless you have accountability. Okay? That is where it gets really hard. That is where it gets really tough. The accountability part. Because coaches, the hardest thing right now, <clears throat> here's the success of our program. I'm very lucky. 
I have five other coaches we're all on the same page. You can't go anywhere in our program that you're not held accountable. On the floor, whatever you do is all about accountability because we're all on the same page. <clears throat> but when you get to have a great team, the coaches are not the ones that are accountable to, or to hold you accountable. Guess who it is? Each other. Very good. Man, it's really hard for teammates to basically hold you accountable. Please, I didn't come here to, uh, he just said this. I, I'm so, I'm so truthful with my team, but I can tell some of you locked in. Coach, I could go in right now in about the first 30 minutes, and I can tell you totally, but I can tell you the girls are pretty much locked in, and the other one's got far away stare. No far away stare is. When you sit in class, you do this. And your mind just goes away. Thousand miles away, you could care less. He just brought me in here to talk about building a championship program. Because here's the deal, we've done it. And you know what? Here's the deal that you don't understand. We've done it when we don't look like North Cross. And we don't look like uh, Wesleyan. And we don't look like holy innocence. You know who we look like? You. That's what we look like. Average girls. Average girls that, man, we get in the place so stinking hard. And we get them to sell out for each other. And we get them to basically love each other. And we get them to basically. And I'm sitting here telling y'all this and some of you. It, guess when it'll be a big deal? Tell me when it'll be a big deal. When you don't get that starting role. You don't make the varsity team. You don't get the goals you want. You don't get some of those things. Then it becomes, guess what? What's it become? Big deal. Here's the key to our success. You can take it any way you want to. Coach, want me to talk a little bit about this? Because y'all, y'all played us this summer, right? We didn't look like nothing special. We don't. So how do we do all this? And when we talk about this schedule right here, we don't play the schools in, in Hall County. We're our out of region schedule: West, Holy Innocence, North Cross. We only play. Guess what? McKeetron, you know who we play? The best in the state of Georgia. Because our program's at that level now. We don't care about winning seasons. All we care about is preparing for state championship. Here's the two things that we built. I built three programs. And I built them on these two philosophies. Okay? Really simple. Really simple. Matter of fact, that's about four pages of notes. Y'all don't need that. You just need this. The first one is this. We're going to play harder than you. Coach, that's pretty. How many players are going to go up? You play hard. You play hard. It ain't up. Guess what? Is it guess what? Yes or no? Not embarrassing. You play hard. You play hard. Do you play hard? 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 Coach, what, why? Hey. Y'all got a state championship right now. There is no girl or no team or no coach that's going to go in and say, do you play hard? Well, no, I'm really lazy. I'm really selfish. I, I, I'm, really, uh, I'm really about me. I don't really care. I don't really like this girl. When we talk about playing hard, we talk about playing like our hair is on. Because if you don't play hard for us, guess what? You don't, guess what? You don't play. Our most talented freshman from two years ago, she could be a, the, one of the best players that have walked through. She wouldn't play hard. She was so talented, it was unbelievable. She wouldn't play hard. And she thought that she was going to, guess what? Play. We had girls that had no, wasn't even close to being as talented as she was. They played, and she didn't. So guess what she had to do? Now, I played very good. Even better than that, she had to guess what? Go. She had to, she's another struggle. She couldn't make our top ten 
She went to a Sunday school and she starts. She's happy. She's happy. They'll never win a championship. They'll never win a championship. So, playing hard, playing hard is a taught skill. If you watch this, did y'all see this shoot? When y'all came in, y'all remember shooting in one? What did it look like? Jim, did you see anybody doing this? Let's waste time. What we call social shoot. You are very locked in. I like, I like your eye contact. I like your body language. I like everything. How did, how did, how did, how did we move with yourselves? How did, how did we move when you shoot? Did you see it? Was you there? Huh? You're going to be kind of slow. Anybody else? Huh? Gay speed. Gay speed. It's always, if you come watch this practice, it's going to be so intense. So two and a half hours is just crazy. We talk about this. This is how crazy we are. We don't talk about playing 32 minutes hard. We talk about playing 47 minutes hard. Can anybody figure that out? We try to win the 32 minutes, but where's the other 15 minutes coming from? You got it. We beat teams in warm-ups. We beat teams in warm-ups. We, we've beaten teams before they ever showed up to play us in warm-ups because of how stinking hard we warm up. We have had girls at my other school. We're in the Final Four. Final four. Okay, that means you're pretty, you're doing really well. We're warming up. Another team stops their warm-up and walks out the half court and goes. I let my sister go sit there beat. Then their coaches got up and walked out the half court. I said, they're really good. We talk about beating other teams in warm-up. Why? Because warm-ups is how you're going to play the first three minutes. If you're not ready, that's why we jump on to So, the first philosophy that we have now is we're going to play harder than you. The other thing is don't get yourself fooled. We do this all the time. You come to just Justin in the summertime and you play with some half court, it's going to probably be pretty good. But guess what we're going to get you butt at? Full court. Because we're going to make you play at a speed you don't practice at. We're going to make, we're going to mentally or physically wear you out. You're going to have to play at that speed. You're going to have to get uncomfortable. Some way, either mentally or physically. And here's the deal. Playing hard is a learned skill. It is not something, you don't come out as a baby and go, hey, I was born to play hard. No. Playing hard is a learned skill. That means anybody can guess what? Anybody can do it. If they guess what? Want to do it. The next thing is, it's so important, it's fundamental. We're going to be fundamentally sound. Every, every one of our girls is going to have just unbelievable fundamentals. Coach, you got a great coach that is so good about fundamentals. But those are two things. We're going to play harder than you, and we're going to be more fundamentally sound. And both of those are controllable factors. Okay? In our program, we have five controllable factors. This means anybody, you ain't got to be an athlete, you ain't got to be the best player, but if you can control these five and you can master three of them, you're going to play. They're this. No doubt defense. No doubt defense. That's your separator. Okay? Number two, rebound. Okay? I promise you. You can pass too much, you shoot too much, you turn it over too much, but you can't rebound too much. I can promise you that. Your best rebounder will always find a way to get on the floor. And some of my best rebounders have been point guards to wing players. Okay? We won four, four of those state championships, we won five, six post players. Five, how tall are you? Five, five, stand up. Thank you so much. My post players was her size. Oh, coach, how did y'all do that? Well, and she, they had played at six fours and six fives. Thank you so much. 
five, six post players win state championships. That's unheard of. Do you think those girls are tough? Do you think they like physically to move people? Think they'd hit you coming across the lane? Absolutely. So, and, and like I said, please, ladies, don't understand. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm right now, I'm giving you secrets. You can do whatever you want to do. Whatever, you've got a new beginning. You are the start of Easter Sight. You. So it, you ain't got to worry about, okay, well, coach don't like me, coach don't this. It's a brand new start, but you can be whatever you want to be. That's you. But what, here's the other thing you better understand. You will never, our team plays so great together. So great together. Because our team knows that our team is the superstar. And I've had girls go everywhere. I've had girls go to Tennessee. I've had girls go to Notre Dame. I got girls in Michigan State. I got I got them everywhere. Those girls, Tori Osmond, and y'all y'all probably don't know her anyway. She's a Michigan State senior this year. Tori Osmond goes to ninety percent of the play of the, the teams around the area. She averages twenty five points and probably I don't know ten rebounds, whatever. She plays at Buford. She averages fifteen points, and she was she was fine with that. Here's the reason why. Here's our other philosophy. You may have four good players. We're not going to play you with our four best players. Guess how many we're going to play against you? Ten. Ten girls going hard as they can over and over and over is going to wear five players, guess what? Down. They're going to wear you down to mentally or physically. So all these great teams that we play, they usually play about six people. He's about our six people. Well, that's great. But our six, your six ain't going to beat our what? Ten. Our, we play the numbers game. But our girls are sold out to, they are as good as they are together. Because our girls know that playing ten people, we're not pacing ourselves. They're going to play all out for spurts of about three to four minutes. So, girls that pace themselves, they're going to probably play 28 minutes. Our girls are usually going to only play about 20, 22, 24. We're gonna not going to have 20 point average girls who's going to average 20 points. But they could get, we can have five girls who can get 20 points on any given night. Our strength is our team together. That's our strength. And I've got girls that are, that are you, it's hard to get people to believe in that. Because basketball is the most selfish sport. Only, everybody thinks that the only way I can be a great player, a great player, is to score 20 points a night. We tell our girls, you're a great player if you're a lockdown defender. I had, girl, I had a girl who started for me three or four years ago. She probably didn't take 10 jump shots the whole season. She probably go, because you're crazy. She couldn't shoot. She couldn't shoot. But boy, can she defend? Could she play great on the press? She was left-handed in the dribble drive. She could penetrate, pitch it to our shooters on the backside. And she was so, so valued by our team. What role are you going to play for him to build a championship with you? Because oh, here's the deal. Okay, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. One, two, three, four, five, five stars, 20 a game. God, y'all going to beat everybody because you're going to score 100 points. Is that reality? So what are you going to bring to the team? What are you going to, are you the lockdown defender? Are you going to get double digit rebounds? Are you going to be the person that takes the charges? Or everybody in our program has value. And we just don't value our scores. Scores only just what? One part of the game. Who's going to be the girl that holds their score instead of 20 points to 6 points? She's just as valuable. But if you don't think that way, it don't matter. What is your role? What will you do for this program's success? I got my kids sold out on coach, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. But that ain't the way about most people think. Basketball, like I said, think about it. Oh, you're only a good, good player to score 20. 
Uh-uh. Not in our program. That girl that takes basically five charges, she's as valuable as that girl that scores 20. The girl that makes them put 10 rebounds is just as valuable. The, the point guard that don't turn it over is just as valuable as any girl in our program. So what do you want your role to be? Here's three things. I got, I got, man, I had three and a half hours worth of stuff to talk to you about on those things. And it, it ain't, it ain't, that ain't what you need to hear. Here's a couple things. Number one, bring these three things to practice and you'll be fine. Okay? The first one, the first one is a mental focus on getting better. There it is right there. Be better. Okay? Here's your first way is every day, the first thing you bring is you bring mental focus. You bring mental focus. You're focused and locked in on what I'm needing to do. That's number one. Number two, you bring energy. Either you're an energy giver or you're an energy taker. There ain't no in between. You're either an energy giver or an energy taker. And energy vampires in our program, they got to go. They got to go. How many of y'all know somebody on this team right now is an energy vampire? Right, right, raise your hand. You got there is somebody on this team right now is an energy vampire. I got them on my team right now. You got a name. Raise your hand if you know this because it's some energy vampires. They, hey, you, hey, she's got she's got to go. She's either got to give, she can't take. So, number one, mental focus. Got that? Number two, you got to be an energy giver. Okay? And number three, you got to be willing to compete every day. Girls don't like to compete. Strength in numbers. Safety in numbers. I don't want to stand out. No, you got to compete. The first person you got to compete against is be better. You know what I think when I hear be better? Here's the first thing I think about. We talk about this all the time in our program. 1% better. 1% better. Because every day if you can get 1% better, you're going you're gonna to get better. Okay? Be better, maybe 1% comes up. Okay? First thing you got to compete against, who, who do you think the first competition you got is? You got it. Very good. Excellent. You got to compete against yourself every day. Every day you compete against yourself. Number two, you need to compete, have a healthy, healthy competition between you and your teammates. Healthy. What do you think that means? Healthy competition. What does that mean? Um, Sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> what does a healthy competition mean? Okay, what do you think? That means me and her, we're going we gonna to go at each other. But here's the deal. We're going to compete, but I'm not going to do anything to threaten her or, or basically have a bad attitude against her. Or do. I, I, if I make her better, what have I automatically done? So instead of me making myself better, I make two people better. Now our team gets what? Stronger. Compete also against the details. That's the hardest one. The details is what makes the difference in programs. And you're always trying to compete and find things with details. The other thing is this. I spent five years building one of the best basketball programs at Buford that there was. Here's what I found out about it. We had a four-year plan. In four years, we won our first state championship. In Atlanta, here's what happens. When you build something good, here they come. It comes to transfers and people don't want to be in here. And one time in my program, I'm embarrassed to say this. In my program about nine years ago, our roster had this on it. 6'5", 6'4", 6'4", 6'4", 6'2". That's bigger than any ACC or SEC team. That's bigger than any college team. And they were all ranked in the top 100. Number two player, number 10 player, number 15 player in the nation. How do you think it worked out? It was awful. We couldn't win a state championship. Because these girls came there because they wanted to be a part of it. But when they got there and found out how hard it was, they didn't want it. Because they were successful doing it, guess what? Their way. And now we wasn't a team anymore. We was a group of, guess what? 
No matter how talented. Those kids were the best in the nation. Everyone I'm talking about was big time D1 signed. They couldn't win a state championship. I can take you and beat them. Because they were selfish. They were energy takers. They didn't like each other. And we were so talented, but it was a train wreck. One girl can derail your whole program. One girl, selfish. Here's an equation for you. Think about this. Put it in life terms. Really something. Everything you do in life should be around relationships. Relationships is where it stands. Okay? Relationships. Are relationships important in life? Absolutely. Give me another example of relationships. Very good. Give me another relationship. Yes. Gosh, y'all scared to death of me. I, I won't bite you. What? Very good. Relationship. Anything else? Okay. Here's the deal. Relationships are part of life. Okay? Part of life. Coaches, I can promise you this right now. My girls, I wish I had a couple of them in here right now because I promise you this. If you watch them work as hard as we work, and all that, and me. Y'all seen the way I coach those girls? Probably some of y'all, when you scrimmage, you probably went, my God, there's no way I'd play for him. He has lost his mind. He's crazy. He says, if you brought most of my players in here and sat them, or basically brought them in front of you, you know what they would tell you? They would tell you right now that I know he's pushing me because I know he loves me. I know he cares about me. And the way they know that is because I develop relationships with them. Relationships, here's your equation. Relationships lead to trust. Trust leads to belief. And belief leads to success. Coach, why are you telling me all this crap? Okay? For you to win, you better build relationships well. Where? Where? Coaches and players, that's good. But where else? Teammates. Teammates. You can't trust your teammate. You can't win with them. You can't trust your teammate. And it, you're going to have to do that with relationships. Now, I tell my girls this all the time. You ain't listen to nothing else. Listen to this. Coach, I know I'm about to run out of time. You ain't putting 30 girls together. In any program, and it all be snow cones and unicorns and candy and all that stuff and rainbows. It ain't gonna happen. It is not gonna happen when you put this group of girls together. You're not gonna all love each other. You're not gonna all basically just just have each. It, it's that's just not the way life works. I deal in reality. But here's the deal. It don't really matter if you like somebody. It is about if you guess what, respect somebody. It ain't about like. It's about respect. How do you earn people's respect? You're a great teammate. How do you earn somebody's respect? You're a hard worker. How do you earn? It's all about respecting each other. It's all about getting out there and working and bleeding together and crying together and all that stuff. And it's okay because the real world is this. You graduate out of this program, you go to college, you come out and you get your $80,000 a year job that you work so hard for and you go and your co-worker or your boss is a jerk. What do you do? You throw your hands up and say, I quit. What do you do? You learn to what? Work to what? Work together. That's life. So this is a training ground right now for guess what? <coughs> life. For life. Relationships. Relationships will have to be built here. Okay? Ladies, I wish you, I thank the world of this coach. You got, you got an outstanding coach. Okay? I don't have to say that. He didn't pay me to say that. You got a great opportunity to build something from the ground up. What you build will not be left up to him. He sets the culture. You live it. You breathe it. You're the one. And here's the other thing. The girls that can't live in your culture, if you want to win, they got to go. They got to go. 
Our girls know in our culture, if, if, it, if they don't fit and they're not trying to pull the same way, they can't do this. They got to go. They got to go. I'm just telling you what? Truth. Last thing, Coach. Find this in your life. People of truth. God, I got I got so much stuff to tell you. People of truth are people that tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Are parents usually people of truth? No. Why? Because they protect you, they love you. Not saying it's bad. That's a good thing. But man, you got to find, in my program, I am the person of truth with my believers. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Last thing on that is find people of truth in your life that will tell you what you need to hear and invest in those people. Last thing is, don't feelings, feelings, you can't do anything with just feelings. You have to take the feelings out of it. We talk about Sally Soft on your shoulder all the time. Sally Soft's going to be whispering, listen, you can't do this. Listen, you can't do that. Feelings, put them out. Trust, trust your responses, not your feelings. Ladies, it's been an honor to talk to you. I hope you got something out of it. I know some of you did. I know some of you did. You're the building blocks of this program. You can build whatever you want. Let me tell you what, don't, don't think that it can't be done here, because it can be. But I promise you this, you will not do what you want to do unless you get everybody on board together. That's the hardest thing to do because people are selfish. And people only care in basketball. A lot of times people only care about themselves. You must understand that you're only as strong as your weakest teammate that you put on the floor. Before you leave, kill it in the weight room. I want to know what your max number is on the squad and the bench. Today's a squad. Take a look at this sheet. Take a look at this board. Remember what he said. Stop moving. If you aren't on board for this, it's fine. It's okay. But don't come on that. We, um, he may have 10 first year program. We could be six. Absolutely. We could be six people if we have to. I only need six people in here to do what he's asking and what I'm asking and what we're doing on that piece of paper. Be one of those six. Because your philosophy and our philosophy ain't the same. You can do it with different ways. Hey, y'all gonna be great, man. Hey, you talk about being being better? Go do it. It's up to you. Thank you. Thank you.